remember if I'm careful I don't put too much pressure I'm going to be able to put darker places here that I can break up with my eraser that I can show our past or beyond can't go past anything that doesn't have a clean edge though so if you just come in here and you start coloring in a place you're not going to be able to really have the ultimate depth so I'm keeping my pencil sharp and I'm now uh, you know creating something that's got the texture without the kerplunks hopefully because when I do the kerplunks it's going to show and I'm going to do them too every once in a while I'm going to have something that I may want to just soften up just a tiny little bit so that I don't have those maybe curled ends or those skid marks going the wrong direction if it was going to be something that's going to be a darker uh, blunter end it would probably be at this end but I would probably still want to be able to do the V so that it comes it just naturally looks like it's getting darker as it goes in and has hairs in front of it uh, as I'm uh, you know creating that darker place I want it to be able to have a point on the end and even though they're small and it may not be all like this it still is a lot better than coming down here and trying to tell somebody that that's going into a darker place and that there there might be hairs uh, you know past it like so but uh, it works a lot better if I come down here and now I get to feather out you know my hair uh, the fur but I think you can tell this it, it would be nice not to have to have this because that's the kind of stroke I put down it's not going to communicate it near as much as if I do this and this is my opportunity just logically to show that as this gap tightened up and uh, went deeper or in between the hairs or in the front that naturally it's going to be going to a place where there's less light so this is important to me don't want to make it as dark as I can make it because even later I may want to make sure that this isn't as dark as something else maybe the maybe the dark around the eyes or you know certain places within that and if it's too dark I want to be able to get it off and I'm working on printer paper but see how I can quickly you know regulate something that I I just want to have that kind of control if I want to and uh, sometimes it's not necessary totally but uh, it often is for me Now, more and more as I get to these darker areas, I'm going to have a tendency to use my, uh, my 2B. But my 2B is probably going to be as dark as I need to go unless there's just that last little tweak here and there that I want to be able to use my 4B at the very end. But that's going to be when I'm assessing the whole thing and seeing, oh, if I if I made that a little darker it would just give it so much better uh, depth and, and composition even and uh, I don't want to get carried away with it sometimes I'll go as dark as I can go uh, you know or fairly dark but usually it's just the smallest place so it doesn't uh, dominate everything so now if I'm coming over here I can create the same kind of situation probably talked about this last week but I want to be able to have the same situation you see that this is getting darker well I know that logically it's going to be darker so even if I don't see it here I would have a tendency to suggest that at least suggest it even if I didn't see it in my reference because we have a curved cat and we have a place that is going to where there's less light hidden behind the face which is shading the cat and we have somewhat of a reflective light over here like we have on the sphere and so over here we do have something coming in from maybe a window or to shine off the floor or whatever it is but it isn't shining into here so even though I may not see it too much I want to learn how to read this so that I can have everything uh, suggesting the light source and giving me the ultimate in depth 